Okay, so this is uh, general biology lecture recording. This is chapter five. We will do the first part, uh, which is by 131. And this is about the chromosomes and inheritance. We will be covering several points. We will do part of it today, which is the div cell division, DNA cycle all the way until we get to the uh, link genes and complexity of inheritance. So this is what's going to be covered And in your body, in our body, we have a lot, a huge number of cells, it's billions, and a good number, a very good number, mi uh, millions, are going, um, uh, are lost on a daily basis and replaced. Uh, there are some of these, specifically some of these cells that we call it the fast growing one. Like you lose your skin, the superficial layer of the skin on a daily basis. So your stomach from inside, your hair, and so on. A lot of, of these parts, you lose it and renew it, recycle it on a daily basis. So it comes to millions that will be replaced. And if you think about it, how can we replace it? If you lost a cell, how can we replace it? And this is... Uh, Cell division, which is our focus for this chapter. Um, so as we know already that all living organisms consist of cells, and in the previous chapter, we said this is the basic unit of life, right? It's the cells. Uh, so cell, uh, all life is cellular, which is a cell theory, and all cells arise from pre-existing cells, and we call that the cell theory. So you need to remember this. What's a cell theory? All life is cellular. Anything that's not a cell is not considered life. Even if it is part of, we have to have a whole entire cell to call it life. The other thing is, all cells arise from pre-existing cells. Cells give rise to another cell. Uh, the uh, organisms in general consist of a group of cells, and if you remember, from one cell, to multiple cells in the form of tissue, organs, and so on. But there is the, the protest, if you remember, it's only one cell. But the vast majority are more than that, or the rest of it is mo are more than that. So the cell division, as I just mentioned, are cells that we make it from pre-existing cells. And, and uh, when you do the cell division, why are you doing the cell division? We talked about repair reproduction and growth. So repair is, you lost this, you replace it, right? You replace your skin on a daily basis. You replace your skin on a daily basis on other parts as well. If you have injury, didn't you lose some cells, mm -hmm. right? So you need to replace it, we call that repair. This is one. The other thing is growth. If you are a child, if this is a child who is growing, obviously the number of cells in uh, making up his body are going, are going more and more and more, right? is doubling, tripling, and so on. Otherwise, how can we grow, right? So he's making more and more and more. The last one is reproductive, which is not our, in, uh, our body, it's just the, the, um, the reproductive cells, which is basically, we will be talking about that later on, which, which is the sperms and uh, the ova. Uh, so there are two types of reproduction. We're talking about reproduction now. Reproduction can be sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Some organisms that are not our focus for today are doing asexual, meaning there is no male and female. It's one, like plants, for example, like uh, algae, like other things, they reproduce themselves. Fungi, for example. This is a fungus that will give you fungus, that will give you fungus, it's the same one. This is not sexual, and it can be uh, asexual as well. Uh, it can be sexual as well, I mean. Uh, on the other hand, the sexual reproduction is you have to have two parents. One is male, and the other one is female. And because of that, the parents are going to produce genetically unique offsprings. Genetically unique offsprings. Meaning, no matter how many people live on Earth, okay? no matter the number is. Every single one of us is unique. If, if you do um, uh, genetic mapping, do you think you will see even two in these billions that exactly the same? No, never, never. 
It never happened. So we call that genetically unique. Every single one of us, like, like how to prove that this person is coming from this parent or not, they do the, 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 the DNA counseling, right? They study the DNA. How to know? Because this is uh, like a fingerprint. That it, it, it's unique. It has to be unique. So now we have a couple of terms that we need to remember if we're talking about the sexual, sexual reproduction and we're saying sexual reproduction is male and female. You have to have two. If, if the parent is only one parent, it's called asexual. Is that clear? One parent only give offsprings, this is asexual. And we have different examples. If, if you have two, one, one male and one female, this is the sexual reproduction. And the term gametes is a term that apply to both egg and sperm. So it's like an umbrella for the reproductive cells in general. Like I, will, I can ask you, uh, do you have gametes? Yes. What kind of gametes? It depends. If you're a male, your gametes are uh, sperms. If you're female, it is the, uh, the eggs or the ova, right? So both of them together is called gametes. On the other hand, when you say gonads, gonads is an, is an umbrella for your uh, reproductive organs. So uh, you have gonads. What kind of gonads? If you're a male, your gonads are testes, right? If you're a female, your gonads are ova or ovaries, I mean, sorry, not over, ovaries, right? So did you get the, the, the concept? Gametes, it's not specific yet. When I say gametes, what do you mean by gametes? Well, it's male or female, okay? That will be sperms or ova, depending on uh, the sex. So this is how the, look, the, the, the sperm looks like, and this is how the egg look like. And with this sexual reproduction, we have a couple, male and female, they will give the gametes. What kind of gametes? It depends, male or female. Male is the sperm, female is the egg or the ova. And then one sperm, not necessarily one, most of the time it's one. There are exceptions, but this is not our issue. Like the twins, if you think about it, how the twins happen, right? Like it can be two sperms, but this is unusual. I'm going with a, vest, with a common way, which is one and one, produce something called, which is called fertilization, producing a zygote. You need to fami be familiar with this, okay? Gametes, sperm, and ova, okay? Mm -hmm. When they come together, you call that fertilization, and the product is called zygote. zygote. You have to remember this, okay? And this zygote is going to develop and become embryo, and the embryo will become fetus. It's not mentioned here. So there is a difference between embryo and fetus? Yes, the, in the early fetal life, we call it embryo. And then it will, like in the first two months. And then fetus, and then we become a baby after birth. He will grow male or female, male and female together, and the cycle goes on and on and on. But you need to remember these concepts, okay? Including the gametes, sperms, ova, fertilization, zygote, and so on. Asexual, on the other hand, is one parent producing genetically identical identical did I say unique here no. no it's identical one parent identical the sexual is two parents unique are we following mm -hmm. two parents unique so there is no sperm or egg it is the same one the same parent that produce exactly the same it's identical, genetically identical. So if you study the, the, uh, the genes of this plant and the parent plant, it's typical. And this is the exception, which is asexual. Sexual, absolutely never, never, it's unique. So if you look at this, can you answer this? And this will help you to do the questions. Uh, can you compare like how many parents for sexual? Two. Two, Two and how many for One. asexual? One. One. How many gametes? Two. Here? One. If there is a fertilization here? No. Yes. 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 Egg, the ova, and sperm. the sperm. No. Here? No. 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 How many chromosomal sets? 23. Is it 23? Uh, 23, 23 pairs. And this will be, uh, which is two sets, uh, it will be two sets, and this this one this is one and this is two okay or two and one i'm sorry two and one the number of chromosomes oh. uh, sets is two sets and one set 
this is one set of 46. This is two sets, each one is coming from uh, one of the parents. Uh, offsprings genetically unique? Yes and no. Is it unique here? Yes. yes. Here? No. no. Okay. Yeah. So yes, this is a comparison and this is important to remember. Now the next part is DNA. Do you guys remember when I talked about the DNA before? Yes. Yeah. DNA is a double strand, mm -hmm. isn't it? Double strand that's carrying genes. So the gene is part of the DNA. And when you wrap DNA around the protein, what do you call it? Chromatin, not chromosome yet. Remember when I said chromosome and protein, yeah. merge them, chromatin? Yes, chromatin will become chromosome, but only when you wrap it uh, tighter. Did you get the difference? There is a difference between chromatin and chromosomes. Okay, so DNA, when you wrap it around protein, you get chromatin. When you wrap it tightly, it will become a chromosome. So we, um, uh, we are talking about the DNA now, and DNA of one person is obviously is going to be different from the next person. Not all of it. Not all of it. The vast majority are going to be uh, typical. So when we see, even though, if you look at e each one of us, we look completely different, right? But the vast majority is the same. The vast majority is the same. 99.5% identical. 99. So I, if I get, no matter how different we look, he's tall, he's short, he's light color, dark color, whatever you want to call it. If, you, if I got any two and analyze the genes, 95% is the same, identical. What's making all these differences that we can see is only half percent. This is the only difference. Other than that, everything is exactly the same. So here is um, a molecule of DNA. And what's the DNA refers to? What DNA means? What's D and what is N and what's A? I know N A, nucleic acid. Nucleic acid and a D. Deoxyribo. Deoxyribo. And what's R? Ribo. Yes. So ribonucleic acid is RNA. Deoxyribonucleic acid Deoxy is DNA. What does it mean? Here is ribo, which is ribose. Remove oxygen out of it, it will be deoxyribose, right? Ribose and deoxyribose. Ribose, take oxygen out of it. D means without or you're removing deoxyribonucleic acid. So the DNA. Uh, if we're talking about the eukaryotes, is it going to be in a nucleus or just in a cytoplasm general? If this is a eukaryote? Nucleus. Inside the nucleus. Why only one? One more. One answering. One student answering. Are, are you following? Yes. Are you tired? DNA inside the eukaryote, it has to be inside the nucleus, inside, surrounded by a nuclear membrane. Mm -hmm. If this is the prokaryote, you still have the DNA but not inside the membrane. It's in the cytoplasm, but not inside the membrane. So it's not a nucleus, right? So we're talking about the nucleus now. So when you put the DNA together, that will make chromosomes, and chromosomes carry the genetic information in the form of genes. Each gene means something. When you read, this gene is translated into this and that and so on. And this is on the sequence of the DNA. So the gene is the length of the DNA, and it is a small segment of the chromosome. It's the DNA, which is part of the chromosome. So if I have the whole chromosome, I have a lot of genes on it. Each one is carrying the genetic information. Okay? And each gene, eventually, on the DNA, on the chromosome, eventually is going to be translated into something. Most of the time, it will be translated into protein. Do you guys remember when we talked about this before, like DNA in the nucleus, and you make a copy, a small copy? RNA. What is that copy? RNA. RNA, and this RNA leave through the pores because it's small, and go to the ribosomes, and do a protein. So obviously, each gene will make a, a, um, a RNA, messenger RNA, and what do you call this process? When you make RNA out of DNA? 
translation. Not a translation. Transcription. Transcription. Translation is when you read and translate the RNA into a protein. Ah. Okay? So this is transcription. When you make RNA out of the DNA. So this is the way they are going to communicate. And again, this is what we mean by chromatin. Uh, most of the time, let me say this, if, if it comes to your mind like, uh, okay, so chrom chromosomes and chromatin is almost the same, isn't it? It's just tight, right? When it's tighter, which one? Chromosome. And when it's not tight, when it's loose, chromatin. chromatin. When, it when would it be tight and when would it be loose? The vast majority of the time, it's loose. Okay? And it will become tight during reproduction. Are we following? Mm -hmm. Here is a cell. If you look at it, you see chromatin. Okay? Tomorrow, chromatin. Chromatin, chromatin. Only when it is the time to reproduce and make another cell, this is where the chromatin become condensed and change into chromosome. When you're done with the reproduction, when you're done, it goes back and become loose again. Did you get it? Mm -hmm. When it is chromatin, when it is chromosomes? 23. We have 23 pairs. So the total is 46 chromosomes. Okay? Normally, we have 46 chromosomes. How many did you get from the father and how many from the mother? 23. 23 and 23. So the total is 46. I mentioned that chromosome is tightly coiled DNA, which used to be chromatin. Now it's tightly coiled. So obviously when you hear chromosome, what comes to your mind? Titan, and what time of the cell? Is it the regular cell, cellular life or at certain time? There is something that's going to happen. At certain time, which is? Reproduction, yes. So when you see chromosome, reproduction, okay? So during the cell division, if the cells are going to divide, which is reproduction, they become tightly packed, and we call it chromosomes, and these chromosomes are going to duplicate. This is the first thing. You're going to duplicate the DNA, and then you're going to make two cells out of it. You get my idea? Here is 46. You're going to double it, and then you make two cells out of it. So change chromatin to chromosome. Double the chromosome, and then continue with the cell division, okay? During that time, when this is a chromosome, obviously th this is during cell division, isn't it? During cell division, it will look like an X shape like this. So this is not chromatin, this is chromosomes, okay? How did I know that this is chromosome? Because two are coming together like this. Two sister chromatid, and do not confuse chromatid from chromatin. Uh, with N and with a D. These are two different things. Chromatin, IN, this is the loose DNA around proteins. Chromatid, it's one of those sisters that is duplicating. The chromosomes are duplicating, so you have two sisters now, right? The original one and a copy. Are we following? The DNA will dub duplicate. I have two now. Each one of those is a DNA, right? But they stay attached like this. So that's what, uh, where it looks like this. After you're done, it will become like this. This is two. Did you get my idea? This is one DNA. Here is a strand, and here is another strand. Two strands here. It's a time to duplicate. Okay, you're going to make it another one. You will stay together like this, temporarily. And then when you detach, this set will go to one side and this set will go to the other side and this is how you duplicate but remember this sister chromatids and what does it mean sister chromatids are when you duplicate the chromosomes before they separate they stay together for some time and this point where they stay together at the center is called centromere centromere so what's a centromere the point of attachment of the two sister chromatids. Are we following? Mm -hmm. Any questions so far? We're fine? Okay. So when you see this shape, X, or you see two, two sets of DNA, 
that are attached together temporarily by centromere know that th it's duplicated. It's ready to make two cells. It's, it, it's not yet in the process of making two cells, but you duplicate it already. You don't have one set of 46, you have two, okay? Exactly. Wh wh when would those do a cell division, as he mentioned, if this onion is growing, right? Uh, if it is repairing, we mentioned it. And what's the third one? Reproduction. Reproduction, producing other ones. Okay? Mm. okay. So the regular cycle of growth and division the cells are going to grow and then they're going to divide and then grow again and divide. This is a cycle. Healthy cells, they start dividing when you need replication. Okay, meaning w only when you need it. On a daily basis, during normal life, there is no cell division. When you need to replicate, this is the time that you're going to do the cell division. This is the healthy cells. The unhealthy cells, which is an exception, this is not normal, they can do an unregulated cell division. An unregulated cell division can lead to? Cancer. Cancer. You Did you understand this part? You Did you get this? So healthy cells. Healthy means normal. The normal cell. Normal cell will stay as it is until it's a time that you need to replicate, okay? This is the only time when you make another one as needed, okay? Like our cells, some of the cells you, you duplicate and replicate all the time. Some others you barely replicate or it's very slow, right? So it will stay as it is. And it's not going to duplicate until it is the time that we need to do so. So it is regulated, isn't it? Uh, you stay like, like this, right? And you're controlled. You're not going to replicate. No replication, no replication, no replication. I'm controlling you. You're controlled. Now it's the time to replicate? Okay, I will allow to you replicate. Replicate and then I will hold you again. So you're controlled, right? If that control is removed, if that control is removed, it will go to cancer. Why? Divide, 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 divide. Why not? There is nothing that's holding me. There is nothing that's controlling me. Did you get this idea? And this is actually the basics of production of the tumor or cancer is when you lose the control over your reproduction. So. If you leave the cells alone, by nature, it's going to replicate. Did you get my idea? Like why people do not steal all the time. Like if this is a person, a bad person, a bad guy is going to steal anyway. You don't steal, right? Because there is a law, you will be uh, catched, right? What if there is no police and do whatever you want? You go out of control and a lot of people will just steal, right? Yeah. So this is what it is. You're under control all the time. You cannot replicate unless I allow you. So the normal is that you're controlled, you're hold, right? The abnormal, or the exception is when I let you go for some time, and then I hold you again. The moment that you lose it, it will go out of control. So one will make two, four, eight, 16, 32 billions, and it will go out of control. Are we okay so far? Okay. So now the cell division, when it happen, it will happen as follow. There are two phases, generally speaking, and then we'll go to the details. There is an interphase, and there is mitotic. Enter means between. Interphase mit means between the two phases. What are these two phases? From between mitotic and mitotic. Mitotic means mitosis, when you reproduce. So I'm reproducing now, okay? Are you done reproducing? Yes. Okay, you stay controlled, controlled. No replication, no replication, no replication. This is the interface. Until you go to the next phase of mitosis, replicate, and then you go back to the interface. So 90% of the lifetime is interface, in between the two phases. What are the two phases? Mitosis. 
between mitosis 1 and mitosis 2. Your mitosis replicate, and then you stay some time, and then you might you do mitotic again. So this is called the interface, which is 90% 90, 90 of the time. And this is when the cells are just, I, I don't need to replicate. I just keep myself, take care of myself, right? This is a normal time. I take care of myself, I make my proteins, uh, my membrane is injured, I'm going to replace it, I'm gonna make some proteins and so on, right? Just taking oxygen, eating, and just, li just living, right? When it's time to reproduction, this is the mitotic division. Okay, where the active cell division happen. So here is the cell cycle, and which one is the major part? The longer part, is it interface or mitos interface. mitosis? Yes. The interface. The mitosis is an exception. Only when you need to reproduce. I will le leave the control out of you, I'll let you go, reproduce, and then I'll catch you again, which is interface, okay? So here is mitosis. When you I will allow you to do mitosis. You, when you produce other cells, you, when you replicate, are you done? You got new cells, that's it, stop. All what you can do now is just grow. Okay? Grow, continue your normal life, 90% of the time. Continue, take oxygen, take food and everything. Just live for some time. The only thing is, before you go to mitosis, at the end of the interface, when you know that it is time for mitosis, you need to do something at the end of the interface. It counts toward the interface as a preparation for the mitosis, okay? Which is duplication of chromosomes. Did you understand this? Here I am in mitosis, right? I produce cells. Done? Okay, the cells are going to grow, live, grow, Live, grow, live. Uh, I think it's about time to do mitosis. I will prepare you for mitosis. I'm going to duplicate my chromosomes, and those duplicates are going to enter to mitosis. Did you understand this? So, chromosomal duplication, does that belong to the interface or the mitosis? The duplication of chromosomes. To the enter, to the enter, to the last part of the enter, right before you start the mitosis. Is this point clear? Did you get my idea? It's part of the interface, but it's at the very end. Like I will do that only when I know that you're about to do mitosis. Is that okay so far? Let me say something here. Mitosis, if you look it up, versus meiosis. I don't know if you heard about this before or not probably uh, high school or something, I don't know. But anyway, if you look it up, you will see that mitosis versus meiosis. What's the translation? This is Greek. Mitos means thread. So there are threads that are going to go like this, attach the, to the doubled chromosomes, separate them apart, so you make two cells. This is where the name mitosis came from. Okay, Greek translation is thread. How about meiosis that you will see? It's coming. Meiosis is translated into reduction, reduction, reduce, 46, become 23. Get the origin of everything, and that will help you understand. Mitosis, I'm not reducing anything. 46, become 246. Did I reduce any number? 146, become 246. Did I reduce anything? But in order to do that, you have threads, mitosis. 46, make 246. No, re no reduction, I did not reduce anything, right? On the other hand, if I have 146 and I make 223s out of it, didn't I reduce the number of chromosomes, right? Reduction means meiosis. Did you understand this part? So mitosis will happen. The cells are already prepared for mitosis. The chromosomes is doubled already. And then it will go into steps until the two cells are going to move away from each other at the end. And we call that cytokinesis. Cyto means cell. cell and kinesis movement. movement. Cytokinesis is the two cells move away from each other. The cell movements. The two cells move away. And this is the last part. When the two cells move away, now I have two daughter cells. And that's it. They are going to grow and continue their life until it's the next mitosis. 
what exactly is happening during my during the interface throughout the whole interface except for the last part the whole interface what's happening you grow you repair your stuff you get the nutrients and oxygen and maintain your life and and so on until it's time for the next mitosis and this is where you duplicate your chromosomes so you are you're preparing the cells for mitosis okay so when you do the mitosis you will end up making two genetically identical offsprings what do we mean by that here is what I mean when I do this scratching myself like this or even if I didn't do that aren't you losing some cells every day the deeper cells one cell one skin cell is going to make two skin cells that looks exactly the same otherwise if that's not the case you will see your body different like every month every year right if that's not if it's not identical right that does your, your body actually change like this part it become bigger after after puberty or something does it become bigger or does it become darker or lighter or looks different or something you did you get like a, a six finger or something like that nothing changed right you're producing something with something that's very identical I lost this cell one will make two I replace the cell with identical cells is that clear so mitosis what do we need to know about mitosis number one mitosis is uh, a phase of cell division in which there are threads that hold the chromosomes attach the chromosomes this is one number two you start with one cell with 46 that will become two cells each one contain 23 huh 46 146 become 246 become four each one of the four is 46 8 46 16 46 32 th 46 right 46 to 46 to 46 to 46 you're just making more of the same clear you're making more of the same this is mitosis and they have to look exactly like each other otherwise if, if every time you have mitosis you produce something different your body will look different every month or something I see you today and then six months later you look different which never happened right unless there is something abnormal normally no it's it gave the same thing after mitosis and when you reproduce and when you double yourself double treble whatever you need how, how, uh, according to your needs and then you're going to enter or re-enter um, the um, interface again and stay for longer time 90 percent of the time okay so if you look at this picture here uh, this is not arranged right okay which one do you think it looks like in the very beginning C looks like the beginning, right? Just a nucleus, and you contain the chromosomes inside, right? And then you start to arrange it like this. And the threads are going to attach to it. I don't think you did that in the lab yet, did you? You will do it probably next week or something. So the threads will come like this and attach. It, it goes ar along the equator like this. And you're going to separate them apart, okay, until you go I mean this until you go see this doesn't like this looks like this right yeah. so it goes like one two three four okay this is the uh, the normal sequence so it go from C to D to A to B at the end of the B the cells are going to separate and move away okay do you agree on that arrangement
Okay, interface itself is subdivided into two parts. Early interface and late interface. The early interface is the major part, the vast majority, which is you're growing, you're keeping your stuff, you're getting nutrients, you're getting oxygen, you repair, just a normal function, normal activities. And the late one is called the chromosomal duplication. This is where the chromosomes duplicate, okay? So if I ask you which phase of the interface is where you duplicate the chromosomes, late interface, right before the mitosis. Is this point clear? Is this point cl clear or not? Okay, so this is where you duplicate and you have two sister, two sister chromatids, okay? Stages of mitosis. Uh, the first thing is if you are at mitosis now and you duplicated as preparing for mitosis, the first thing is, and this is very important to know, the exact sequence, very important to know, the first thing that's going to happen is the chromosomes condense, the membrane disappear. Okay? Condensation of the chromosomes, they condense. Otherwise, it's not a chromosome, right? It condense. This is one. Number two, this me nuclear membrane is going to dissolve. Why I want to dissolve the membrane? Because you're going to get these mitotic spindles, these spindles or the threads. It's outside in the cytoplasm. How can I reach? If I'm here, this is cytoplasm, right? Mm -hmm. This is a nucleus. I'm here. How can I reach to those? I can't because there is a membrane. The membrane has to dissolve. So I have an access to those. Okay? So here you're, you're forming the mitotic spindle. This is condensation, duplication, condensation. Uh, the membrane disappear and the mitotic spindles and spindles is these threads. As far as I remember, you do that in the lab. You get some uh, beads or something and you put them together and you do that on the tables, as far as I remember. So, but, but understand it so it will make sense. Um, 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 I remember doing that before and we do something like a round like this and we take it off and we say this is the nuclear membrane disappeared. And then we put it along the equator and this is where it's, um, uh, the metaphase is happening and so on. Um, so the next part is they are lying like this, okay? Uh, they don't have these names here, but it, it would be a good idea to know what we're talking about here. So write it down. This part here is uh, the first part which is the preface. This part right here is called the metaphase. 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 What's hmm? prophase? Prophase. This is called the write it down beside it. Prophase. So what's happening in the prophase? This disappear, condensation, disappear, mitotic spindles. Clear? Prophase. What's the metaphase? This. If, if, you, if, if you wanted to understand, meta means equator. Isn't this is the equator? Right? So metaphase is when you arrange along the equator. All right? So you're doing the metaphase, and then the mitotic spindle will actively it's not just forming. Here it's forming only. Are we following? Here the mitotic spindles form. Did it attach to it yet? Not yet. It will attach during this phase. You, so it's waiting for you to arrange. And then I'm going to attach. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you're going to attach. The mitotic spindles are going... When it, it's only when it's like this. Okay? When it's along the equator. And then... But remember, what is this? This is two, yes, two sister chromatids. This is a double already. Did you get the idea? Mm -hmm. This is a double. So what's going to happen is one thread will attach to this one and the other one will attach from here and pull them apart. Mm -hmm. So it's, it was like this. One thread attached to this, one thread attached to this and pull. The two sister chromatids are going to separate, right? Ultimately. But this is called the metaphase anyway. Okay, so three is the anaphase, uh, the prophase, and uh, four is the metaphase. And then, uh, next part, when they start to separate from each other, and we call that anaphase, 
anaphase, which is five. Uh, they should have put it here, but um, I think you do it in the lab, but it, it it's a good idea to know it from now, okay? Prophase, metaphase, anaphase. This is the anaphase. Uh, what's the anaphase means? Anaphase. Anaphase means away. Ana means away. Separate. This is when they separate. Are we following? So what's after the anaphase? Wha yeah, like this? Anaphase. It's like this, okay? What's after the anaphase? They move away from each other. We call that telophase. Okay? I will write it down if you guys want to. Okay? After the te what's telo? Do you know what's telo translation? Away. Do you know what telephone means? Telephone. You're using the telephone, but do you know what it means? Telo means away, distance. Phone means sound. So if you think about it, wha you're using the telephone without knowing what it means. Telephone. Tele or telo means far away, distance. Phone means sound. So this is this is what telephone means. So this is telephase. Telo or tele is the same thing. Tele, telo. Both of them means far away, distance. So when there is a distance between those, like here is one and here is the other one, they are away from each other, you call that the telophase. So here is a group here, and here is a group here, which is number six. Okay? This is after telophase. It's not mentioned, but I'm telling you. Telophase, this part is here and this part is here. Isn't that separated from each other, mm -hmm. away from each other? And then the nuclear membrane is going to reform. Okay? But the cells are still, t are still together. You notice this? Look. The cells are still together, right? The cells didn't move away. Yeah. So it, you, you recreated, reformed the nuclear membrane, nuclear membrane, but the two nuclei are like this, right? Together. So this one will take part of the cytoplasm and move, and this one is going to take part of the cytoplasm and move. What do you call this movement? Cytokinesis, yes, cytokinesis. This is when they move away from each other. And this will be the final step, which is when they move away from each other. So cytokinesis is this nucleus, this is exactly what's happening. It's like this. I have two complete nuclei, but they are, they are like together like this. Okay? This one will take part of the cytoplasm. This one will take part of the cytoplasm. Now I have two cells. Right? Not just two nuclei. Because at, at, until this point, until this point, I have one cytoplasm, right? And two nuclei. But when you start to take part of the cytoplasm here and part here, I have two cells now. Do you get the idea? And the two cells will move away from each other, and we call that cytokinesis. Uh, all what I talked about so far is valid, but not for the plants. The plants are going to be a little bit different. So this is an animal cell. There, there is something that's formed here. Like if you're asking, uh, how are we going to divide the cytoplasm into two? There is something here that's called a cleavage furrow, formed like this, become deeper, 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 until you have two cells and they separate from each other. Okay? The plants are different. Cytokinesis in plants, it does not separate like this. D did you get how this separate? You have two nuclei, each one take part of the cytoplasm and move. This is not the case for the plants. The plants form a plate here. Not just a furrow, it's a, pla it's a plate. And this plate is going to split it, okay? So remember, cell plate. Cell plate is cytokinesis for plants or animals? Plants, okay? Just a, a plate come at the center and split rather than leaving the cells to move away by themselves. So this is the difference between plants uh, and animals. Uh, here is another term that's called diploid and haploid. Your body cells, all of them, any cell, 
skin, liver, pancreas, stomach, anything. How many chromosomes do you have? 46. 46, right? You have 46. How about the sperm? 23. 23. And the ova? 23. 23. I call the 23 haploid. Haple means half. Haple. Translation. Haploid means it has half, which is one set only. We call the 23 sets. Okay? So it, it, it will have one set. How about the, 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 the body cells? How many? 46, which is two sets. Okay? Are we following or not? Depol, depol means double. Hapol means half. And it even sounds kind of close, right? Hapol, half, depol, double, right? So the diploid, it's double sets, two sets. Haploid, it's half of the double, so it's one set only. What's a one set? How many? 23. 23. Are we following? If I take any of your cells right now, I take one, of one cell from your mucous membrane, how many chromosomes should I see? 46 total. 46. We, we say it 46. It's with 23 pairs. Yeah. But we say 46, right? Uh, what about skin? How many? 46. So it's two sets, right? How about your sperm or your ova? Which is one set, okay? And which one is deployed and which one is haploid? Body cells is deployed. How many sets? Two sets. Each set is twenty-three. How about sperm and ova? Haploid, which is one set of twenty-three. So. We, we mentioned gametes. What what's gamete means? Six cells. Six. So sperm or ova. So gamete is sperm or ova, right? Like uh, I, I I have a gamete. What kind of gamete? Sperm. You have a, um, a gamete. What kind of gamete? Ova. If you're a female, right? Both of them are called gametes. Uh, each one of those gametes, how many? Is it haploid or diploid? Haploid. Haploid. So males produce the gamete sperm and females produce the gamete ova or egg. Okay? And look at this. This is N, right? And this is N. N is one set. And this N is one set. So how many here? 23. 23. And this? 23. 23. When they merge together, they make the zygote. Which is two two n. This is two n. Which is your your body cells? Isn't your body cells two n? Two n means two sets. Each set is twenty three, which is forty six. Okay, so here is one n from the sperm, one n from the ova. They come together, fertilization occur, and you have the zygote, which is two n. And the cells, it will stay 2M, it's 46. But one cell will make 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and so on, until you get into billions of cells, which is the whole uh, organ, uh, organism, which is the whole um, human. And it's going to become adult, and the circle goes on and on. But I want you to remember this haploid diploid thing. Haploid is N, one set of 23. Deployed is 2N. Two sets, each one is 23, total is 46. If you look at the 46 chromosomes, and the reason why we call it two sets, why don't we just say uh, it's 46? Why are we saying it's two sets, each one is 23? There is a reason for that. Because what? Because it's coming from two, this is this is one, but 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 because it's more because you have twenty three homologous pairs, homologous. It's not if, if the forty six, each one of the forty six looks different. I wouldn't call it two sets. Did you get my idea? Did you get my idea? If the two sets 
uh, I mean if the 46 each one number one is different than two then 10 then 15 then 46 I can't say it's two sets but what's actually happening is each two looks like each other so you can arrange them right like this I have five here and five here it's 10 I understand but it's two sets of five right this looks like this this looks like this this looks like this right mm -hmm. so it's two sets of homologous and homologous means the same looks the same like this the thumb is homologous to the thumb right and so on each or each set is homologous to this this is homologous to this this is homologous to this so that's why we always say we don't leave it as it is 46 we say two sets of 23 because the two sets of 23 each set is homologous to the other one uh, last point that I'm going to talk about today is those 23 those 23 two sets of 23 each two are identical right from 1 to 22 this represent the autosomes meaning the auto means body uh, soms means body I mean autosomes mean the body cells okay soms means cell uh, body autosomes mean the body cells are we following mm -hmm. so how many pairs 20. pairs 23 why did you put it in pairs because each two are homologous you need to remember these terms homologous homologous homo together right homologous I have two sets from 1 to 22 and this this is 44 isn't it 44 yeah, yeah. this is all autosomes means the normal body cells each one of those will have something about your body the last one which is pair number 23 or we can call it number 45 and 46 these are the sex chromosomes what are the sex chromosomes in males XY, XY. and females XX. XX so this is different but other than that the other 22 pairs which is 44 is autosomal did you get what's the difference between autosomal chromosomes and sex chromosomes the first 22 pair is autosomal chromosomes autosome the body cells the body chromosomes the chromosomes that represent the body okay the body chromosomes representing the body the last pair only which is 45 46 or the pair number 23 the last one is the sex one and this is different from males to females uh, XY versus um, XX and look at this picture look at this X chromosome it's big and this contains a lot of things look at the Y small and have very few color basically the only thing that you can find on the Y is to determine that you're a male that's it X have a lot of other things we'll talk about that next time but just understand that for today okay